Previously on Power Reviews. They caught fire. And you want to stay... I still can't believe you told him he could live here. I've been called away on business and have to start packing immediately. I was just looking through our lodger's passports. I have so many questions I don't know where to start. I found them concealed in a lockbox along with a folio containing some very interesting documents. And now, Database Rangers Power Review. Greetings, Ranger fans. Salutations. And welcome to Power Reviews. What are you working on this time? Performing a more thorough background check on our lodger. A more thorough background check? Does that mean you ran one before? Of course. I had to make sure he doesn't have a criminal record. That's the kind of mistake one only makes once. Well, I guess that makes sense. Wait, did you run a check on me too? Naturally. Well, what did you find out? Same thing I found out here. Nothing. Nothing? Nothing at all. Shall we commence our analysis? Um, sure. Let's uh, start with the recap from last episode. Very well. Absolutely nothing of narrative importance. Well, at least it's something different. We already have about twice as many Zords as we do episodes, and there can definitely be too much of a good thing. If you consider rocket-powered, disembodied animal heads to be a good thing. Well, at least they don't have big, googly anime eyes. Those were optical field-scanning sensors. Fair enough. <sighs> Regardless, let us return to the subject at hand and delve into our analysis of Episode 7 of Power Rangers Megaforce... Who's, Who's crying, crying now? now? It's another day at Harwood County High when a knuckle crack and a snap cue the crowd to start clearing the path for a pair of punks who set their sights on Troy. Now I know what everyone's going to say about these two, but just because they're two high school bullies, a big guy to skinny guy, antagonizing our main characters, doesn't mean that they're a ripoff of Frankie and Joey of Boy Meets World. I mean, come on. Next thing people will be saying they're a ripoff of Bulk and Skull, and that would just be silly. You know what we call new kids around here? Fresh meat. Fresh meat. Really? The bullies do their best to provoke Troy and make him want to cry, but... Yeah, but you know Troy? Cool as ice. Take a good look. You see any tears? For once, Megaforce Red's lack of emotion seems to work in his favor, as the delinquents become unsettled and decide to move on to a far more responsive target in the form of a young entomology enthusiast. Seeing the plight of the boy and his bug, everyone's favorite action figure uses his kung fu grip to put a stop to it. No matter how small, everything deserves respect. With this irrelevant conflict seemingly concluded, we shift our focus to the insectoid ship, where Vrak openly mocks Kreepox in his previous defeat at the hands of Megaforce Red, prompting him to prove his worth by settling the score. After school, it looks like poor little Howie isn't in the clear yet, as the bullies are still looking to squash his Haldeman click beetle. Which just demonstrates the ultimate effectiveness of Megaforce Red's previous intervention. But the tables are turned when Kreepox arrives and decides to squash them instead. Yes, I'm sure that alien creature is just interested in your planetary currency. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that was pretty funny. The two are saved, though, when an unexpected hero grabs Kreepox's attention. Just because you're bigger doesn't mean you could pick on them. See, Troy's intervention did have an impact. Yes, he inspired an unfit child to confront a creature covered in blades. I'm sure that lesson will stick with him for the rest of his undoubtedly very short life. Fortunately, Jake and Gia arrive just in time to save Howie from his Darwin Award. Unfortunately though, despite their best efforts, Megaforce Rangers Black and Yellow are no match for Kreepox, who somehow manages to defy logic and geography by throwing them clear into the warehouse district. What follows is a brutal battle accompanied by Jake and Gia passionately rejecting Kreepox's views that might makes right. You're strong, but that doesn't mean you'll win. You're going down just like any bully. Please tell me Megaforce Black doesn't also think the insectoids desire Earth's lunch money. They try to bust out their ghost morphers for reinforcement, but Kreepox doesn't give them the chance, as he knocks them out with a fiery meteor shot attack. With two rangers down, he leaves to attack the city, and draw out the rest of the team. He does realize they're still alive, right? I think we've established that intelligence is not his strong point. 
Speaking of low intelligence, it seems Gosei has finally alerted the other rangers to the threat, but is still unaware of the specifics. Gosei, where's the monster? It's in the area. Thanks. That is not worthy of gratitude. I think I can triangulate their coordinates. You know that a mentor is incompetent when he relies on a high school student to locate his own technology. They find Jake and Gia just as the two regain consciousness, and Troy immediately takes control telling Emma to keep an eye on them, and Noah to come with him as they go after Creepox. Because obviously, two rangers are all that's needed to defeat the opponent that just nearly destroyed two rangers. Then again, perhaps they just don't teach first grade math in high school. From his cliffside vantage point, Creepox summons a slew of meteor shots to rain fire on the unsuspecting city. Troy and Noah race to the source of the destruction, where the bitter insectoid reveals that the whole attack has been retribution for his defeat back in Episode 4. The flashback leaves Megaforce Rangers Red and Blue plenty of time to morph and make the first strike, but their Mega Blasters prove entirely ineffectual and Blue is quickly incapacitated. Now it's just you and me, Red Ranger! <laughs> so, are you ready to cry yet? Take a good look! Fanny's here! Take a good look. He's wearing a helmet. He bats Troy around for a few more moments before attempting to finish him off with a supercharged meteor shot, which is foiled at the last moment by Noah's defense stream. Once his watery protection evaporates, though, the two are knocked off the cliff and forcibly demorphed. Don't worry. I'll take it from here. I wish I could help. Why can't he? He seems no more damaged than Megaforce Red. Oh, right, I forgot. Teamwork only matters until a Red Ranger says otherwise. What follows is an incredibly impressive fight scene, as Troy battles against Creepox's brute strength with skill and finesse, whipping his blade around like a master fencer, even though he has no established fencing background, and dodging about like an acrobat, bouncing right back up every time to keep the hits coming. He still can't escape Creepox's next meteor shot, however, and is forcibly demorphed once again, having to hold off his opponent's finishing strike with the still existent Dragon Sword. Cry for me, beg for mercy. Take a good look. You see any tears? I'm starting to wonder if he actually doesn't know, and is genuinely inquiring as to whether or not he's expressing any emotion. The answer is no. Troy summons all his strength to remorph and spin his way free, squaring off against Creepox one last time, as they both prepare for their final attack under the watchful eye of V-Rock. They're not going to explain why he looks that way, are they? Probably not. So after all this, it comes down to a final single-stroke battle where, against all odds, but perfectly in line with common narrative practice, Troy is the victor. Well, that was anticlimactic. The others have recovered from their supposedly near-fatal injuries just in time to congratulate Megaforce Red on his victory and witness the resurrection of Creepox by Vrax Zombats. Good. How many times have they morphed now? Well, there was Jake and Gia early on, then Troy and Noah, and then Troy again, and then Troy a third time, and now the other four, so... So their morphers obviously have a recharge period shorter than a toddler's attention span. They summon the Gosei Great Megazord, but once again find themselves outmatched by Creepox, presumably due in part to their indecisiveness in the use of their dragon sword. Galaxy Media Shot! Troy implores Gosei for help and is rewarded for his, let's say, perfect attendance with a power card for a brand new transformation. The Hyper Gosei Great Megazord. Actually, it's the Ultra Gosei Great Megazord. The card says Hyper Gosei Great. Yeah, I've learned not to read any of the text I see during the battle footage. Good to know this series also provides educational value. So they combine the Gosei Great Megazord with the Nine Brother Zords. You mean ten. What? Two on each leg, one on each arm, and two over each shoulder. Two plus two plus one plus one plus two plus two is ten. Huh. That would be one plus one plus two plus one, not one plus two plus one plus one. Okay, fine. One plus two plus one. Shut up! Come to think of it, what are those attachments over the shoulders? And that helmet? Where did all these extra zords come from? Uh, rewards for good citizenship? At least this ultimate combination can still move under its own power as the battle against Creepox culminates in a showdown between the Insectoid's Galaxy Meteor Shot and the Megazord's Victory Charge. Finally defeating their not particularly long-standing foe, the Rangers celebrate. With a capital. Yeah, boy. 
please promise me he will never do that again. <clears throat> uh, let's wrap things up. At the brain freeze, the rangers are met with a snap from Roy the bully, commanding everyone to stop as he drops to the floor to rescue Howie's Haldeman click beetle. No matter how small, everything deserves respect. But despite the bullies having learned their lesson and their big win against the insectoids, Troy can't help but wonder what new threats lurk just over the horizon. And that's the end of our episode. So, what did we think of it? Well, obviously, obviously this, this was, was the, the best episode of Megaforce, Megaforce to date. What? What, what are, are you talking, talking about? about? This episode was awesome. It was abysmal. What was your problem with it? Oh, I don't know. How about the extraneous side characters? You mean the ones that established the core themes of the episode? And then disappeared for the majority of it, only to have their character dynamic completely transformed off-screen. I'm sorry, but I'm pretty sure having someone save your life from a giant insect is going to change your perspective with regards to picking on little guys. So... You'll admit that Megaforce Red had no direct involvement with their change of temperament, making their connection tentative at best. I wouldn't say that. Troy did plant the first seeds of pacifist philosophy in their heads and provided a positive example to both Howie and child audiences in general on how to deal with bullies, both through nonviolent resistance and coming to the defense of those smaller than you. Just so long as the rangers are there to rescue you and the situation turns violent. All right, I will admit that the parallels do tend to fall apart when giant monsters are involved, but the scene immediately prior did show how you can't always rely on others to fight your battles for you. And if you look at the deeper metaphor, the ranger's rescue demonstrates how violent situations are best left to higher authorities. And I suppose there's also a deeper metaphor to the completely unacknowledged appearance of additional zords. No, but somewhere between having the Thunder Megazord have a katana show up completely out of nowhere and the Samurai Megazord having a katana show up completely out of nowhere, I've kind of come to terms with the fact that some things just go with the transformation. Things like an oversized mechanical spinal growth? All right, not usually on this scale, but that was probably just part of the new power card. The same power card which referred to it as the Hyper Gose Great? Yes, but the cards have almost never matched what they're saying. At seven episodes in, I've also come to terms with the idea that these are just code names for the morphers to read. Otherwise, we'd be hearing ick everywhere, and that would just be kind of... ick. Much like this episode. Can we at least agree that Troy really shined here? Like dishwater. I meant the character, not the performance. Are you going to argue that the two aren't linked? No, but we saw him acting cool under pressure, defending the helpless, taking command in a stressful situation, and defeating a much more powerful opponent through sheer skill and stamina. Not as much stamina as it took to watch that battle. It went on forever. Oh, come on! That fight was epic! If we're talking about length, yes, it was practically Homeric. It was the climax of the only running arc that Megaforces had. Ah, uh, yes, the rivalry with Kripox, because we all got to know him so well. I know he was only around for seven episodes, but in that time we got the initial challenge, the first skirmish, and the defeat that fueled this episode's escalation and ultimately culminated in his destruction. In that short amount of time, it managed to be a more effective rivalry than twice as many episodes building up Jaden and Decker. What more do you need? How about an actually compelling and complex character? Okay, I'll admit he was on the shallow side, but he was consistent with his brutish persona all throughout his tenure, and really presented a powerful threat here through his raising of the city and total domination in battle. And yet he was defeated by a single sword strike from a single ranger. How is that any different from Scott's defeat of Shifter? Don't you dare bring my team into this... this mockery. If this charlatan was half the hero that Scott was... <sighs> Finish the review yourself. I have work to do. Kay, I'm sorry if I... I said I have work to do. I need to make sure you haven't let someone dangerous into both of our lives. Wait, do you really think... I don't know. That's the problem. Now, can I please get back to work? Okay, um... Overall, this is apparently a really divisive episode. If you hate one-shot characters, morality tales, and inconsistent editing in your PR, then this one probably represents the worst of the season. But if you're looking for thematic consistency, high stakes, and excellently choreographed battles, then you may very well find this to be one of the best episodes since Saban bought back the show. 
Hopefully next time will be a little bit more even-handed though, as we take a look at episode 8 of Power Rangers Megaforce, Robo Knight. Until then, this doesn't feel right. Kay? Yes? If you've got a minute. All right. Thanks. Don't know what I'd do without you. Neither do I. Until then, farewell, farewell Ranger, Ranger fans, fans and, and let, let the power protect, protect you. you.